I swear I didn't watch this before. I was just basing it off of where he had his fingers taped. Nailed it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It is my day off and I'm sitting here browsing YouTube and I see Peter McKinnon has gotten into an accident and also posted his x-rays about said accident. So it has left me no choice but to react to one of my favorite YouTubers accident videos and also go over his x-ray. Let's go. All right, so if you don't know who Peter McKinnon is, he is a fantastic YouTuber. I've been watching him since way back in the day when he and uh, Casey Neistat used to do vlogs together. He does mostly like uh, videography and photography and I've learned so much from him. He's like one of my YouTube idols. So when he gets in an accident, obviously I clicked on the video as fast as possible, but then I stopped it because I was like, I might as well just make a video out of this and go over the x-ray because I saw the x-ray in the thumbnail. So I haven't seen this yet, so let's get into it. I broke all my fingers. <laughs> oh, see that x-ray in the intro? I shouldn't be smiling because I know he got an accident and he got hurt, but at the same time, obviously I love x-rays and this kind of stuff, so yeah. Today we're talking about breaking fingers. You oh my. He had quite the accident there. I'm not smiling. I'm just like, oh my, he's in a good mood, so it puts me in a good mood, but yeah, crazy accident here, so I'm curious to see what he did. You guys have seen it on Twitter. I posted it on my stories. I broke all the it. Wow, so he broke his second, fourth, and fifth fingers, it looks like, just based off this. I suspect in like six to eight weeks, which is the timeline for this, I will be one-handed um. That's pretty accurate. It takes about six to eight weeks for any fracture to heal, especially on the fingers. They tend to heal a little faster than like if you broke your leg. How did it happen? I saw a lot of people wondering, how did it happen? What did you do? Yes, let's go. You bail on your motorcycle and break all your fingers? If I bailed on a motorcycle and only broke fingers on my left hand, that would be very lucky. I Yes, this. I mean, what do we call it? In the ER, a lot of the nurses and physicians and whatnot call people who ride motorcycles organ donors or organ cycles or cycle donors or something along that combination because so many motorcycle riders or motorcyclists get in accidents and come to the ER and they are severely messed up. Tons of broken bones, road rash, you name it, head injuries. I've seen it all. And some of the worst traumas I've ever seen in my life are from motorcycle accidents. But I did, I tipped a side-by-side, -side, I rolled a side-by-side, -side, flipped it, happened fast, put my hand out, natural instinct. Frame came down directly on top of my fingers. So this must have been how he did it, but can I just take a minute here? Because this is why I love him. Everything he does is like filmed. And before even watching this video, I knew that he had footage of his accident. That's just what he does. That hurt my hand there. Keep your hands inside at all times. I love, I, only he would make a joke out of this because so many people would be writhing in pain after breaking, well, I don't know what he broke yet, but I know he broke some fingers. And he's like kind of making a joke out of it. Maybe it's adrenaline. Maybe it's how he reacts to getting injured. I don't know, but kudos to him. I took the glove off. The skin was kind of coming off the fingers. I was like, oh, that sucks. It hurts a little bit. But it's not that bad. Yeah, he's got some good abrasions there. Don't know what's happening underneath, which is why we need an x-ray. First thing I did is I texted a picture of it to my tattoo artist and I said, Andrew, are these okay? <sighs> I love how he's concerned about his tattoos when he could have broken bones. And they were, I was moving them. I could make a fist, I could, I could stretch them. How could these be broken? There's no way, you can't do this with broken fingers. Yeah, just because you can move your fingers doesn't necessarily mean they're broken because they could just be non-displaced fractures, which means a bone is fractured, but it's not out of place. It's kind of just still in place, but fractured, non-displaced. My buddy Dan got me some ice. He brought out a big Tupperware thing of cookies. I had seven, I had seven cookies in <laughs> I want to say like 12 minutes. It Calories don't count when you're injured, by the way. By the time I got home, the pain was like 12 out of 10. So my wife convinced me to go to the hospital, get some x-rays. Before I get into this x-ray, why is it always our wives that convince us to go to the hospital? Why are we so stubborn? We, as in males, we're so stubborn that we never want to go to the hospital no matter what's wrong. And our wives always push us to go to the hospital and they're usually right. Okay, now let's do this x-ray. Before I even get any further here. So what I'm looking at right here, cause I saw his bandages taped. So basically what I would do, if I were reading this x-ray, first off the ring, 
bad form. The ring blocks a lot of radiation. You can see there's already fractures here. There could be a fracture under his fourth proximal phalanx that we're not seeing, and it might be covered by his ring. But in the trauma situations, a lot of times you can't take these off because well, that's obvious. I usually start at the base and I will go up each carpal bone here, making sure everything's okay. I look at the carpal heads. Then I move on to the digits themselves, the thumb or the first digit. Then I would go up to the second digit or the index finger or pointer finger, middle finger, third digit, fourth digit or ring finger and fifth digit. Before I do anything, I'm gonna look for soft tissue swelling. Soft tissue swelling is going to basically clue me in on a smaller fracture that I might be missing. Um, you can see some soft tissue swelling around here. Actually, you know, honestly, I would expect more soft tissue swelling because I already see this linear lucency through the uh, fourth middle phalanx here. And there might be a distal phalanx fracture on the pinky finger. So basically what I'm seeing is distal phalanx, pinky fracture, middle phalanx, fourth, finger or ring finger fracture, non-displaced, and also a pointer finger, middle phalanx fracture, non-displaced as well. So I say non-displaced because the fracture line is there, but the bone is actually not in place. However, the first rule of all radiology is one view is no views. So we need two views to make sure that this is a true non-displaced fracture. I cannot make that conclusion based off a single image or single radiograph. I need to see multiple projections. The reason is because it may look okay from the front to back, but if I turn it, your middle phalanx may be tilted a little bit and I can see the actual line cause a little displacement. So it doesn't really matter in some of these smaller bones of the finger, but once you get into bigger, longer bones like the femur, it definitely matters. I see three fractures here. This is a questionable, minimally displaced uh, distal tufts fracture or distal phalanx fracture of the pinky finger. But otherwise, like his all metal carpal heads look good. The real thing you're worried about here is a, dislocations, and B, fracture lines involving the joint spaces because those are treated differently. So, back to the video. Doctor looked at the x-rays and was like, that's broken, that's broken, and that's broken. I swear I didn't watch this before. <laughs> I was just basing it off of where he had his fingers taped, and yeah, three fractures, nailed it. It's like I know what I'm talking about. First, we went to the hand doctor this morning, and he's like, nope, they're all broken. Pretty much straight across, just... Oh, so maybe there was a uh, middle finger fracture that we didn't see. Let me go back to it. It's too hard to tell on my monitor. I'm looking at an image through my monitor. I would have to see my super high power radiology monitors where we can zoom up and then the pixels are crystal clear. They're like 8K monitors, very high end, which is why we use them in radiology. Very important for stuff like this. I can't see that fracture. I trust them. Usually it's rare for it to skip a bone. It usually just hits them all the way across. So yeah. You have to just assume that was fractured, even if you can't see it. And honestly, it doesn't matter because they'd be non-displaced as well. So, yeah. On an angle. But the good news is they said they're not displaced and they should heal perfectly fine. I love how he keeps putting his x-rays, even in the outro here. And <laughs> he keeps zooming in on the same one. See, that? those are minimally... Well, hold on a sec. Let me rewind that. When he shows this the image here, which I didn't see before... You see this step off here when it goes like that? So that, I mean, that is minimally displaced, but overall it's non-displaced. If it were a displaced fracture, sometimes they would have to put pins. I know you may have seen people who have pins coming out of their fingers. That's to basically align their phalanges or proximal distal or middle phalange joints. But this one's not displaced, so if you just keep it wrapped up, should heal fine. All right, so that officially concludes this video on Peter McKinnon's accident. I hope you heal well and your hand is back to normal and you have a speedy recovery. I love Peter McKinnon. I love his video, so, you know, I'm honored to do this video, even though it has to be about his accident. Anyways, make sure you smash the like, subscribe button, follow me on Instagram and TikTok, and uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.